Right before Anime Expo 2018 opens up, we got a Black Clover Quartet Nights trailer. Now, here's how we do things on this channel. If you're new, we're gonna watch the trailer, react to it, it's my first time watching it, and then we're gonna analyze it, go frame by frame if we need to analyze some stuff. Apparently, this is my favorite type of trailer, actually. It's called the Overview Trailer, which is usually where they go over systems and they talk a little bit uh, about game mechanics. And those are usually my favorite types of trailers. But let's not delay this any longer, let's watch the Frame rate on this animation looks kind of bad. Like, like a bad frame rate for the original animation. But still, I'm happy there's original animation for, for story mode at the very least. And I'm excited to explore Young Yami's side of things. Yep. Four roles. Okay, so I've seen a little bit of this in, on the website. I've seen some categorizations. Uh, but it's nice of them to break these down in uh, in the trailer. Fighter, shooter, shooter are long range, okay. Support. Defense stat buffs for their allies in battle. Oh, that guy's just me. Just puts up a, a, a nice wall. Healer, huh. So they have support and healer. Interesting. This is my favorite character. He summoned sheep. It's so great, it's so good. Okay. Alright. Alright. Battle stage. Alright. Take advantage of the terrain to gain the upper hand in battle. Okay. Sure. Wait, what is this? For each character. Missions and mini stories for each character. Oh no. Oh no, I don't like this. Really? Loadouts? Okay, we're gonna have to go frame by frame and look at what some of those cards do. Huh. Who is this? I, okay, so I haven't watched Black Clover recently. Is that an original character for the game? Yeah, the frame rate on this animation is super low. It looks lazy, it looks low budget. Yeah, what are you talking about? So she traveled back in time from what I know to take revenge on Yami. So young Yami has no idea what he did because it was actually him in the future. And I think that's kind of what the story is. Now this cutscene is badass. I really like the or original anime scenes, but... <sighs> they look so low budget, so low frame rate. This is a story of history bound with fate. Some Kingdom Hearts sentences right there. September 14. Okay, I think we're about to learn some real stuff about this game. It's analysis time. So, for a moment there, I didn't know if they were gonna go this route of having character classes or not. It seems that, yes, they are. And, uh, they seem pretty straightforward. It's like, fighter are the melee characters, shooter are the ranged characters. Then you have support, which seem to buff <laughs> their allies. It, it, it says defend and support their allies with magic. And we have a couple of spells here as well, like, for instance, this wall. Is this guy May from Overwatch? Maybe. And we also see, like, these spider webs that seem to control the area. So, support characters are seem to be able not only to defend and to buff your allies, that they also seem to be able to sort of control the stage, control some areas. To put up some walls, to force the opponents to go around them, to force them down a path where you've got potentially other allies that will be able to defend that approach. And then we have Healer. 
uh, who have various healing spells and placement magic to help their allies in battle. So, the placement magic to help their allies in battle, not entirely sure what that means, if that's kind of just the same as support where uh, they give buffs. I know this character, for instance, uh, she, she summons sheep. That's her thing. And there are different kinds of sheep that she summons. For instance, this big one that you can see right in front of her, like, that's just a big sheep that punches the opponent. So healers don't necessarily mean that, oh, they only heal the allies. No, they, they, they can actually deal some damage uh, if needed to, but the, the focus of their abilities will be on healing. And apparently they can play stuff that helps allies, not entirely sure how. The battle stage section was kind of underwhelming. It's like, oh, we have stages and you can use the terrain. I mean, obviously, but I do like the, the stage design that's in this. There's a lot of different platforms, a lot of... Uh, ways to take advantage of that stage design, so to speak. All right, this seems new. Challenge mode uh, are missions and mini stories uniquely prepared for each character. For instance, we have a mission for Asta here, uh, where the mission is to hit with melee attack 30 times, blow attacks with Demon Slayer Sword five times, that's one of his abilities. You gotta land the Spinning Burst, you gotta land the Demon Dweller Sword three times, and hit with a follow-up attack, not giving up is my magic. So not giving up is my magic, because is actually his ultimate. And there's some dialogue in here. Uh, Asta talking to these people in Hood. Sort of a visual novel type dialogue scene. And then, yeah, you just kind of fight. You have missions. And that's that's something I totally did not expect. This game had story mode and had multiplayer. And that's all people ask for these days. So this is going the extra mile. This challenge mode is just bonus stuff in my book. And that is amazing. And then this is the stuff that maybe I wasn't such a big fan of. You can build decks. I really thought this was going to be sort of a, an, an Overwatch type game where each character has a different set of abilities and you combine those abilities in different ways by bringing different characters into the fight in order to try to do better than your last match or in order to counter the opponent. Now with this deck thing, it's going to add that much more depth to it, but it might end up just complicating things unnecessarily because you already got four different characters, each one with their own unique ability set, and then on top of that, each one of them can have a different loadout. What are some of the things this does? We can see that there are three decks. Two of them are locked. So I guess you got to unlock them at some point. It seems to use the in-game currency. And that's the only currency that we see right now. So this might be a good sign to there not being any microtransactions. But obviously that's unconfirmed until the game actually comes out. So the standard deck itself, like not any particular card, the standard deck seems to decrease the damage while using the Demon Slayer Sword and become able to evade using X. Decreases damage taken after using spinning burst. So like each deck on its own has some sort of buff and this is the buff for the standard deck. And then we have a quick look at uh, some of the cards. Increases Demon Slayer Sword duration, shortens the Demon Slayer Sword cooldown, slightly increases Demon Slayer Sword damage, reduces time before automatic health regeneration. Okay, so some of these are ability specific. For instance, the ones talking about the Demon Slayer Sword, those are specifically affecting one of Asta's abilities. And then we have this one, which seems to be just like a general buff, reducing time before the auto health regen starts. The assault deck that we see underneath the standard deck it increases the attack damage it also increases the spinning burst maximal travel distance and you became able to evade using x while utilizing the demon slayer sword you can also continuously evade so unlike the standard deck which decreases the damage you take while using the ability the assault deck increases the damage you deal so it's more offensive focused we got another quick look at some cards here slightly increases the spinning burst damage mitigation obviously this will all make sense once we actually learn a bit more of the characters but if you want an overview of asta's abilities we've made one you can watch it right here click the card another card that just increases health and you can change the deck mid game as you die you can just press square and change to another deck that you have already customized beforehand. This sounds like a lot of work before going into a match, doesn't it? Like, if you only main one character, I guess you only have to build three decks. But if you're the type of player like I am, who likes to constantly change characters, uh, this you're gonna need to customize a lot of decks before jumping into a match. Increases barrier placement magic damage and health auto-regeneration. Decreases damage taken during that... An old magic power. Mm. 
There's a long description at the bottom here that is different from the description of the other deck. I wonder what that means. This one, on the other hand, it's the exact same description. And finally, the defense deck also increases health and ult magic cooldown. Decreases damage to self and nearby enemies while using one of his abilities, but you lose the ability to dodge. Interesting. So assault and standard let you dodge, but defense makes you tankier while reducing your ability to dodge. So you're less mobile, even though you take less damage. Okay, I think I'm kind of coming around on this. This gives each character some pretty distinct play styles. It's complicated, don't take me wrong, but I think it's gonna help in the longevity. I just hope it doesn't hurt too much uh, new players coming in and feeling overwhelmed by all of these systems. But overall, I think that's gonna be a positive thing in the long run. And that's gonna do it for today. That's pretty much everything we have to analyze. There's some specific abilities we could look at, but we've been doing some uh, character breakdowns looking at all of their abilities. So when we get to those characters, we may come back to this trailer and uh, give them the proper look they deserve. Last time around, we broke down Lux moveset. If you wanna watch that, you can click the video right here. If you're in the mood for something else, there's also the video at the bottom but as always, thank you very much for watching. My name is Globku and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.